I'm going to because, you know, that, I did that last time. I know. Yeah. Just trying to get some precursor in there. Hello and welcome to Two Brains, One Bottle. He's Josh, I'm Sean, and today we are drinking Fryer Frey Ranch. And I mean F-R-E-Y. Like Glenn Fry of the Eagles, but we're not sure. Because, or Frey. Yeah. Um, ranch. There's a... R-A-N-C-H. Yep. Uh, by like, the like the dressing. Sorry. By the time this... I had to squeeze the dad joke in there. The people need it. The people want it. Anyway. By the Welcome. Time, by the time this podcast comes out, there will probably be already a video po uh, on the YouTube channel of us reviewing Fry Ranch or Frey Ranch. And oh my God, it's good. It's so fucking good. It is tremendous. And I don't use that word lightly anymore. Right. Um, just a brief Cliff's note. Oh, you want more, sir? Just, just uh, you know. You want more? Just, you want more? <laughs> Why are you yelling at Was me? it because I burned the roast? <laughs> Excuse you, I would never burn a roast. Wait, wait. Ah, there it is. Ah. So, Cliff notes on this. It's... <clears throat> it pours fast. The, yeah, it does. This it, that it comes out of that bottle quick. Oh my goodness! We're gonna go with Fry, Fuck. Oh, and it's God. it's out of Fa Fallon, Nevada. Fallon, Nevada. They are farmers and distillers, and every single thing about this, it is grown, distilled, matured, and bottled on the Fry Ranch. Hmm? Turn the bottle on the table. Don't turn the bottle on the table. It goes Sorry. Grind, grind, grind. Sorry. Oh yeah, last time one of the other things the mic picked up because it was literally on the table was us every time we went like that or did this or any well, of that I'm, stuff. No, 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 it's fine. Like it no, is. No, I'll, I'll gently, gently glide all of this crystalline glass there we over go. so we don't knock anything <clears throat> over and we can set everything down. Behind right, us. you are then, sir. So anyway, welcome to this the third uh, third episode. Edition. Yes, third episode, and I got notes. I'm sure the people yes. with the headphones appreciate it. More importantly... Why did you... It's on blue fucking paper and black ink. I work in a warehouse, it's, and every it's day... It's so shit and difficult to read. I work in a warehouse, and oh every day... God. Every day of an order... No that, wonder you have to wear such thick goddamn <clears throat> glasses. Are you done? <clears throat> it could have been green, it could have been pink. It depends on the day that the paper that they run. I, oh, it takes I used me back to working in a school. I used company resources for personal gain, okay? Well, yeah, it take, it's just, you know, I had I, <clears throat> a few years. I, last time I lived in Kansas City. Now, listen here, you little shit. You know what? You're, at least my microphone's working. My, mine's working. All right. I just forgot to set the screen time mm -hmm. thing. It's fine. I know, as long as I know it's running. I'm just saying, watch your glass on the table if the table's picking it up. Okay. Before... Before we get into, you got, you got rats, buddy. <laughs> Before we get into weirdness, real weirdness, pick a state and I'll tell you a stupid law that's still in their book. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I know a lot of these stupid law things. Yes. So let's go with one. Should we start with Nevada? No, no, I know. Let, let's go, let's go, Wisconsin. Wisconsin? Wisconsin. <clears throat> in Wisconsin, a law that is still on the books, margarine may not be substituted for butter in restaurants yeah. unless it is requested by the customer. Because of course, Wisconsin <laughs> was you like that. People care so much about your dairy. It's fucking ridiculous. <clears throat> you betcha. Jesus Christ. All right, let's. This is just what it'll be. I'll go through all fifty states, <laughs> criticizing how each one of these laws. I figured is it'd be dumb. cheese related. Yeah, dairy, margarine, butter. They don't want a substitution. No. That's what I'm saying. Dairy related. Okay. Yeah, that's why people about your dairy are so fucking dumb. Next, uh, let's go to New Hampshire. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm 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 just shooting at from the hips, folks. Sorry, I haven't really read any of these. I just said. That sounds like a good conversation starter, and <clears throat> then I did read a couple, and I was like, holy oh, shit. <clears throat> New Hampshire. It is illegal to collect and carry away seaweed at the beach, but only at night. I want to know the circumstances behind that. Did they film Creature of the Black Lagoon or Swamp Thing there, and it terrorized people? Well, I just want to, like, 
Why coming out of the night? water? Like what? What's the what's the harm in carrying seaweed away? It, other than you look like an it, old the ocean will make monster. more, you know. <laughs> but I mean, is there an over harvesting of seaweed? That I, all I can think is that you're right, and that somebody carried a bunch away at night. A, a, like a monster. Somebody was just like, oh my god, it's the swamp thing or whatever. I don't know. Is that a New Hampshire thing to get on the phone real quick and uh, call uh, the authorities because somebody offended your whiteness? At, maybe at the time the law was enacted. I don't know. But it had to have been such a big problem. Like, you know, it was one incident that just escalated. And suddenly they're like, oh, all right, fuck it. <laughs> You're not allowed to get seaweed from the beach anymore, but only at night. During the day, when we can see it's a human. Right. Are there guard towers watching the beach to make sure you don't right. walk away with too much seaweed? Is there Are there armed forces and protecting is, the it, seaweed? Is it just when the sun goes down? Or is it like after 9 p.m.? <laughs> right. Is it dusk or is it dark? And Hold, hold, whoa, hold up, son. Is that seaweed in your pocket? I don't know how it got there. Or are you there. just happy to see it? I was holding it from a friend. Or are you just happy to seaweed? <laughs> ah! Oh you know, you God. keep digging, you'll find a shitty joke. <laughs> right there at the bottom of the barrel. Oh. I hope you people are enjoying this. This is terrible, every, terrible. Every humor. joke's a dad joke if you try hard enough. Oh, man, or if you lose enough faith in yourself like dads often do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pick another, pick another. Uh, let's go to my home state of Oregon. That's your home state? Yeah, born in Oregon. Where? Uh, I was uh, adopted in Medford. You're adopted? Yeah. The things Jesus you learn. Jesus Christ. Catch up, man. 30 years ago this How was. long have we known each other? Not 30 years. So no, I forgive you. Orog. Okay, Oregon. No. Yeah, Oregon. I, I, I know. You know, like the thing in your body. You know. You know the thing that uh, you need Oregon. to function well so that vaccines can go through you and you can stay healthy? You know, we have a lot of friends. Oregons. You know, my family has a lot of friends in Tigard. We were almost going to move up there. And then my daughter got into the charter school uh, and yep. literally two weeks away. And she's like, well, we can't leave now. We can't leave now. She's in this amazing charter school. I loved everything about the University of Oregon except my roommate, the housing committee, and uh, how the situation was handled. But And the weather. Uh, no. No, the three, the three months I was there. Oh, you were only there three months? Yeah, I was only there a semester because I got kicked out of the dormitories. Then how is it your hometown? I was born... There. I was born in Medford. I went to college in Eugene. Like okay. to start out my collegiate studies, I went out of state to go home. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. You're going to love this. I'm going to hate this. That's that's <clears throat> what that reaction means, folks. In he Oregon. says, I'm going to love it. I'm probably going to fucking hate it, except he was right about the whiskey. The whiskey's amazing. Hey. Here's to mud in your eye. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. I'm just a squirrel trying to get it up, man. Ooh. All of our glass clinks today have been harmonious. Mm. Yeah, even you changing up glasses. So, Oregon. It is illegal to place a container full of... Oh. 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 Is this the is this the rainwater one? Negative. Okay. Okay. This, this <laughs> is the rainwater... Oh, is this not... Okay. In Oregon, it is illegal to place a container filled with human fecal matter on the side of any highway. Yeah, shit. <laughs> that shit, should be illegal in any state. Shit buckets are a thing. Um, are they really? In the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> because of road trips? Uh, you know, like you got piss jugs, you also got shit buckets. Are piss jugs? Oh, are piss uh, jugs? That's, that's more of a trucker thing. Yeah, piss jugs. Well, I mean, are I'm like, well aware of what they are, but I'm yeah. saying, are they illegal? Yeah, you can't throw the fucking jug I mean, off the side of the goddamn highway. Just, it's kind of just rude. And, but yeah, I'm, I'm saying. Same thing with fucking buckets of shit. They should be illegal in every state. I feel. You know, when a state has a particular problem, they need to enforce it with a law. All I'm saying is, how long does it take to get drive off? You don't want to know how many cases it takes to make it a law no, that's because not, that's that not where makes, I was going. That makes for a very shitty situation. Uh, what I'm saying ah. is, how long does it take to drive off the freeway, find a dumpster, throw it in, and leave, and get back on the freeway? That's yeah, not about the convenience. Well, apparently, it is. A lot of, no, a lot of people just try and go through Oregon to get up to Washington or go down to California. It's often, it's often, it's a lot of snowbirds from Washington coming down to their homes in California. Goddamn Jehovah's Witness. No, I'm just kidding. That was, uh, that was last episode. So, fucking snowbirds. Okay, one more. I'm going to save the rest for like the next episode. 
Oh, no, we'll just do this every episode. We'll have like a little. I'm saying, have a couple until we run them out. Yeah. How about Nevada? You want to finish with Nevada? And it's pronounced Nevada, not Nevada. It is Nevada, right? Honestly, I don't know. Yeah, Las Vegas. Nevada. According to the DMV, Reno, Nevada. According to the DMV, they have a wall. It's a mural on the wall in Henderson DMV. It says it's pronounced Nevada, not Nevada. Of course, Henderson would have that. They're they're erudites, and they all go to private schools. Not all of us. Um, <coughs> but in Nevada, sex toys are prohibited. I'm a felon. How are they prohibited when they're it, sold in every fucking shop? Oh, they're not actually, classified as sex toys. In Henderson, there's no adult shops. There are adult shops in downtown Vegas. But not in Henderson. Oh, is that a Henderson, Nevada thing? Oh, no, you're right. That's Nevada. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, statewide. Yeah, you're right. That's... So, yeah. Statewide. How? Okay. So it's just an old law that nobody enforces, apparently, because they wouldn't let, you know, the, the love shops stay open. Adam and Eve's. All of them, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, I saw that, and I'm like, really? Oh, That's not true at all. I went to a fucking sex shop when I first moved, when I was coming out here to look at places right. to live originally years ago, uh, I went to my first sex shop. Because in in Vegas, right? No, because one of the guys we were with wanted to get blown through one of those uh, show window things. Oh, good God. Yeah, like he is a seedy, seedy, shitty corner stone. Yeah, sounds like it. I've owned by one guy sex shop. Never, <laughs> never have I ever done that. <laughs> oh yeah, it was uh, gross. Yeah. Although I did, I did get one fond memory of uh, Oregon. We went up to Eugene, or sorry, we were in Eugene. We don't. We went up to. We went up to Portland. Um, God, that's good. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say who, and I'm not gonna preface who because that's not fair to them. Uh, but we go, <laughs> we go up in a in a car, and we go to a sex shop in Portland, and there is a Great American Challenge, and it's like this 24 inch fucking 10 inch across <laughs> giant red, white, and blue star spangled dick. <laughs> <laughs> with a giant set of balls and a suction cup underneath. That is a challenge. <laughs> and I laughed so fucking hard. And then I was unaware of this, but the guys who I was with, I'm really trying to be careful about my words. It's okay. Bought it for a female that was in our group. Oh, that's kind of insult. And gave it to her as, I think, a birthday present. Did she enjoy it? She laughed really fucking hard. I mean, hopefully she enjoyed she it. I don't know <laughs> if she ever used it. But she That's... laughed really hard. She was a great sport about it. Okay, good. Oh, uh, I mm -hmm. would What's that game where you, you if you, there's a game and where... Then, I'm sorry, at the CD sex shop, <clears throat> this is where it ties in. Oh. My bad. I missed the connecting flight. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm traveling tomorrow. What do we and want? I, there is no connecting flight. It's a direct flight. What do we want? Low flying airplane noises. When do we want them? Meow. Go ahead. So where it ties in is we go we go to uh, this shitty sex shop in Vegas in downtown, and uh, there on the wall on the top shelf is the Great American Challenge, <laughs> and I'm cackling like a witch, just. Oh, that's abusively awesome. loud. That's awesome. And wicked. And everyone in the store is looking at me going, what the <laughs> fuck is happening? Are you having a conniption? Is he having a seizure? Do we what have is this? And I'm screaming and I can't breathe. <laughs> and I'm starting to hyperventilate. And I go, oh shit. And then panic sets in. And I almost have a fucking panic attack because I see this giant dildo. And I went... Maybe that's how Darcy felt when she opened the gift. <laughs> <laughs> What's the? There's a game, a video game, where it, you if you, you can get an achievement where you unlock like a purple dildo of death or something, and you, you kill everybody with this purple dildo. I don't know. I can't remember the top of my head. I, don't, I is this a game that's legal in the U.S.? It yeah, like yeah, a Japan yeah. Thing. No, 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 no. But I'm kidding. All right. Hey, how about we answer a question from a listener? Oh, you Wait. fucking asked a question? We've oh, got, why? We've and, got two. But Oh, shit! No, no, you Double know the shit! Sorry, we've, we've got one. We'll do one, one this episode and one the next. Okay. Because they're both 
Are they once kind of do they, require, do they re- Oh fuck. Okay. I had to print out, you know, research. Oh, Jesus. So, okay. What's the? This is from from Bruno and Henderson. Bruno and Henderson. Okay. What's the unspoken rule regarding post bathroom cleaning of your equipment? Is it different for uncircumcised people? Yeah. <laughs> now I used to work in a pizza place way back when. And I used to work with a guy who, he was a Muslim, or, you know, practitioner of, of Islam. And he told me that part of their religion is when you, when a man is done, you know, using the restroom, they have to clean themselves. They, they have to. And I did some research for when I got this question. I was like, oh my God, he's totally right. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll let you continue. Please. You lead. And it's not even like an unspoken rule. This is this is in the, you know, Quran. This is like, here you go. The unspoken rule, of course, is give it a shake, put it away, don't make a big deal out of it. Don't talk to anybody in the in the men's restroom, right? <laughs> You're right there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not such a conversationalist when I'm trying to take a piss. Yeah, exactly. You don't talk to I'm, anybody. The, like, here's the thing. We also haven't been in public for a year. And the only time I really needed to go or ever had to go like that would have been in a movie theater during a long movie. Right. I'm I'm pretty judicious about going before I leave and then coming back. Yeah, but sometimes, you know. Even if I go you know, if I go out to dinner I'll use the the, the bedroom. Maybe you recently changed your diet to like a a lot of liquid like I I did and something Mm -hmm. I found myself going like every two hours. But yeah, you generally it's you don't talk to anybody. You don't make eye contact. You do this your business. Is this a serious question? Well, I'm saying if you're in the men's, if you're no, in a I'm public, asking. This is a serious. Yes, question. It's a serious question. You're in a men's. I said, hey, what I did was I reached out to, to some people. I said, hey, I'm doing a podcast. It's it's you know for adults only. Basically, it's it's not for. This is kids. an after dark podcast. It's an after dark Absolutely. podcast. Room six after dark. Hey, I'm trying to understand. Okay. And I said, what's the question you've always wanted an answer to, but just never bothered to look up? Okay. And and okay. That's where we got this. I see. So you're doing the research on this, and I'm reacting. Uh, this time, yes. If, if oh, feel feel okay. free to. You, you're okay. Welcome to, you know, repeat I, the question. I thought he was asking me, and I was like, I am. I'm asking you. What's your opinion about uh, unspoken rules of public bathroom, like post bat post use cleaning of, of your equipment? And do you, you know, what what are those? Let me let me read the question. Was the unspoken rule? I don't. Or? I don't clean after every time I use the restroom. I clean when I shower. Exactly. Which, but the, the question got me remembering about that guy. And I was like, well, what is the deal with Islam and, and having to clean after every single time? I, I can safely say in my 30 years of life here on this planet, yeah. I have never fucking thought about that ever. But not given it a single moment's Thought. But what really got me wondering about it was, is it different for uncircumcised guys? Because the foreskin is there to kind of like hold on to some stuff. And you, you know, do, you, do, you, do they clean it all the time? So what happened was, <laughs> just some reason, went on the old Wikipedia and the Islamic toilet etiquette. Are you ready for this? Just a few little tidbits. And we are not here to bash anybody's religion. Uh, no, not, not with this anyway, <laughs> but this is one of those things that I had a, a hard time wrapping my head around. It's strongly discouraged to relieve oneself into flowing water. Not sure why it is preferable to step into the bathroom with the left foot and step outside the bathroom with the right foot. Again, no idea why <laughs> I actually do that. And I don't know why I do it. Really? Yeah. I walk in with the left, I walk out then with the right. Then at some point you heard something. I don't know whether I heard something, but I know from marching band it was always lead with the left foot, but never anything about walking out with the right. Maybe, oh, oh let me go deeper, let me go deeper. Okay. Maybe, maybe the leading with the right was before marching band in my more formative years where I didn't know to lead with my non-dominant side. So I would avoid stepping on cracks to break my mother's back with the right foot. Maybe that's hmm. maybe that ties into it. That's diving really deep into that my is. own psyche, though. Uh, sorry to give you that much insight. It's okay. Go ahead, please. I do remember him saying also something about how um, 
they only wipe with the left hand because the right hand is the one they shake with. That... Like, that's why you shake with the right hand is to say, look, I got nothing. I'm not hiding anything. And uh, if anyone's listening and you know Two Bears, One Cave, you know this topic's been covered. Uh-huh. Uh, and Bert Kreischer has openly admitted that he wipes with one finger because he saw it. He saw a, a reference to it. Oh, well, if you want to go down that road, yeah. I'll go down that road with you. And I don't I don't need to. <laughs> he would he would soak the finger under hot water underneath the sink and then use it to clear the pipe and then so wait so he it, oh my so he does like a probing bidet of his with his finger no just a like a scoop like you're like you're cut like you're uh Okay. Wow. So I need, you I, I need piping, more whiskey. <laughs> you ever been piping out pastry and you need to cut? Oh the, God! You have to bring food to, into it. You need to cut gnocchi and like you're you're yeah. snipping it off. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or like you're cutting dingleberries off a dog's ass. That's what he's doing with the finger. Fucking hell. Hey, and we're here. You obviously don't watch Two Bears One Cave. That's uh, Tom Segura. And oh, I'm, I'm aware of it. I just I, I've watched keep, every I episode. Keep watch, to be honest, it's it's uh, it's different. It's different. Ooh. Sorry about that. Ooh, wow! Just recorking the uh, the bottle, and I got a little, a little strong. <clears throat> so, dude, all so all I'm down to now with the nose is creme brulee, caramel, mm-hmm. and white sugar. Like it's just so rich. When you say white sugar, you mean just like granulated? Yeah, granulated white sugar, and a little bit of powdered sugar, like yep. on waffles. I mean, the orange is still there. Now that it's been, mm-hmm. but see, mine. This is fresh out of the bottle again, so this isn't uh, hasn't been sitting. So I'm basically back I mean, to square okay, one. Okay, so this is this is kind of taken a, a spice turn, and this has been sitting yeah. out in a, in a more open glass. There's no taper to it. It's not a Glencairn. This is a small writer's right. tears um, accompaniment yeah. glass. It's the kind of whiskey glass you get in a gift set, and it's. It's gone more spice heavy. It's gone more barrel spice, mm-hmm. more rice spice, and more more baking spice. But it's all kind of harmonious. But it's definitely playing off of the banana funk note, like uh, banana bread, nutmeggy, cinnamon. Yeah. note that I was talking about earlier. You know what? I it's, would lo- it's going into that. I would love to try this with bread pudding, cold or warm. I just think it would complement it so well. I would almost use it just as a drizzle, like a soak. I don't do that with my bread pudding. I don't do the brandy shell or whatever, the cognac shell. I don't... No, not shell, just... But... Oh, oh. There's a little splash. There's a little splash on the top. Stop it. Stop. stop I it. know. Stop I, teasing I me. I know what I'm doing. I know so, what I'm doing. Getting, getting, I've cooked many a, many a, many a dessert accompaniment to uh, a steak. Getting back to cleaning your penis. <laughs> my penis? <laughs> so, uh, I just... Real quick... Uh, like I said, we're not here to, to bash on Islam or anything. We're, it's just really kind of one of those, this question got me remembering and thinking about why, why? Urine is forbidden to be on a Muslim during prayer times as it is dirty. The foreskin is a possible spot where urine can accumulate. Circumcision is used to prevent this. Right. That's why they circumcise. Right. And then it just became this, well, it's just, cl- it's just cleaner overall, so America will we'll, we'll do it too. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Actually, you may want to go into the uh, history of Judaism if you want to go into but that kind this of This is older, isn't it? You might want to go into Judaism mm. if you want to go into that kind of circumcision and the justification behind it with uh, moils and things like that. One thing I agree with on this list. If you want to go further into <laughs> cutting off the tip of someone's dick without their <laughs> consent, I consider it genital mutilation. Noise. And I would be really upset if it happened to me. But would you want to do it as an adult who can make the decision for yourself? No. I am an adult who can make the decision myself, and I don't want to do it. Right. Well, that's probably why they do it to babies, because they don't have any say in the matter. Yeah, but that's, again... That's but also, it I'm heals in. really quick as a baby. Yeah, it's a six-week recovery time. Compared to grown-up. Six-week recovery time. Oh, really? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> it's the same. One thing I agree but with. But as a baby, it's like you won't fucking have this. People say you won't have the same memory. I don't believe that. <laughs> You're a liar. <laughs> but also, I'm not going to go through it just to fucking prove it. Um, I can't argue with you. I'm just, I was just basically kind of. I'm speaking from the, uh, the, the turtle and a half shell. Fuck. <laughs> 
Clan. Oh. Uh, the Foot Clan. So, Look at that. Oh, oh, what a great secondary reference. Fucking nailed it. Yeah, I call my ex the Shredder. Oh, man. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I would call my Moyle the Shredder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done, sir. Thank Give me you. a toast. Yes, that Thank is you. nice. That's still harmonious. Um, yeah. So it's one glass. <laughs> so it's a thunk at a glass. Yeah. But as I was saying, to finish off the whole Islam thing, one thing I agree from that list is says one should remain quiet while using the toilet, as in taking a dump. I'm like, yeah, no, don't talk. Don't don't be like you know. Good game, huh? Or whatever. Just get it done and get out. Look, I think... A dangerous pastime? I know. Not for myself. For you people. <laughs> you, you people you are people. choosing to listen to this. So this is on you. <laughs> this isn't on me anymore. I, I, I'm giving you the opportunity to walk out now. Hey, hey. Hey man, oh, no. they're paying to listen to this. Oh no, no I just, <laughs> I, you know, still. Okay. You need to preface I'm, it. I'm done though, I'm done though with that subject. It sounded like you were leading up to some other thing. I was leading to something, I don't know, I lost my thought right at the the, the left, right at the before. Sorry. What was I leading up with? Uh, leading up with? Don't talk in a, when using the toilet. Look, sometimes, Thank you. Well done. Well, what did I do? Well done. Sometimes you can't help but have to make some noise. And in that case, try to stifle your laughter. But look, if you're that fucking loud and explosive, we're all going to laugh. And I think that's the part of the etiquette. I don't that know. We're, Sometimes that, I'm, I'm like... I need to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> but when I, but when I, when, when you hear it, there, that, like, there's the childish part of you that goes, <laughs> "Ow!" <laughs> right? right? Like, jeez, a loo. I won't, I won't uh, use the the profit or nonprofit, mm. whatever way you go, word, name, thing, title, trying to cover all the bases. Uh, much like a guy tried to cover all of the backseat of the toilet in an AMC that I was at one time, and he screamed. And it changed me as a man. It hurt me so much to hear it that I went, I don't care what I'm ever going through in the bathroom. Just please try not to laugh. <laughs> wow. Because it viscerally hurt. How about we change the subject now? No, I'm just trying to, you yeah. know, I'm trying to finish a thought. Much like somebody no, else no, no. is trying to finish a shit through this <laughs> podcast. Right, well. You know, people listen to podcasts on the toilet. you got to appeal to all markets, my friend. Right. I just have a mind for marketing. All right, well, if you're a, if you're a, a young, if you're a lady listening to this and you, no one ever told you this, front to back. What? Hey, fellas, same shit. Nobody wants shitty balls. There you go. Anyway. And there's, and there's your toast. So, I think it was Jason Muse that said that. Nobody wants shitty balls. Or sounds it, like something it, he... Or was it Kevin Smith? So I don't know. I want to chalk it up to Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith doesn't get enough credit for... Smoochie the, boochies! For the, for the great impact that he has left on the world of filmmaking... Like, he's done episodes of Supergirl on the CW. Has he? Like, I've yeah. never seen it. I've never watched an episode. Take a look at his filmography sometime. Oh, I'm sure he's been in lots of stuff. Because... Not been in. Directed. As a director. Is that what he's been doing? He's Good a, for him. No, he is a director. He's been a director since Clerks. He directed that? Yes. Clerks. Clerks 2. Get the... I know, uh, I know Chasing that. Chasing Amy. That's Kevin Smith. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about Jason Mewes. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Kevin, why I was like, no, was really? Like, no, I said director Kevin Smith. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I was like, I thought Kevin Smith directed Clerks, but then you kept going. I was like, sorry. really? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. What's Jason Mewes been doing aside from every now and then popping up with Kevin? So he did Zack and Miri make a porno with Seth Rogen. He directed it? No, he was in it. Again, 
I didn't swinging see. dick. Good for him. And good for whoever. I mean, I know he was a dogma, obviously. No, he was swinging dick. Like, there was a shot that it was just like, all right. Was it like the end of, of, of he Boogie was, Nights with Marky Mark where it was So prosthetic? he was in to, be, to play the, the guy, uh-huh. like the ringer. The, <laughs> Jason Mewes is a porno ringer. Wow. Really? <laughs> good for him. Fuck, man. Like, all right. Doing this thing, like, cool. Good job. You had to work how much for that? Oh, sorry, that, that girth's not wide enough. He's trying to make an okay sign, but he can't go big enough. Yeah. No. Nice. Because my fucking hand hurts. Yeah. Hey, there it is. That that is an Where'd actual, go? Uh it I took it off. Okay. It needs to breathe every once in a while. It does. Uh uh knives and thumbs don't mix, kids. Guys. Really, when you're when you're working in a kitchen, practice knife safety. One in front, two behind. And the knuckles guide. The knuckles stop the blade from coming down on your fingertips and tuck your thumb. Do not let your thumb overhang. Do not get lazy. Laziness is fucking terrible in a kitchen. Can you see that scar? You know yeah. what that's from? I, got, I, I also have, <laughs> no, mine's from a table saw. Fuck. My. Yeah. You want to talk about, I almost did I, I went tip. with the K, J. Kenji Lopez alt thing nope. and, and really fucked up because I stopped doing the Gordon Ramsay thing. And uh, the Gordon Ramsay thing saved me yep. so many times. Well, cause I, uh, I was using a table not saw. Not that I'm blaming J. Kenji Lopez no. alt. I think he's fucking great. I just, I tried to do his technique and I fucked it up. It was me. It was on me. I don't want to try and be accusatory. This isn't the heat you want. No, but I, uh, I, I, I was using the table saw correctly, but when you hear that sound of biting oh. wood, you're like, oh, sh-. you have just enough time to say, oh shit, and then it kicked back and hit me in the stomach, and fortunately, that was the first time I ever got stitches in my life, and it felt weird, but fortunately they were able to save it, so I can, you know, I feel. Everything, but yeah, I try to take the tip of my thumb off too. So follow safety guidelines; they're there for a reason. And instructions. Yeah, instructions are written for people dumber than you because you're <laughs> looking at them before the problem. <laughs> before you're dumb, <laughs> you're reading the instructions before the bad things happen to you. Wait. So you're smarter than the percentage that are going, "Oh shit! Mm. What the fuck?" Oh no, help! And you grab the thing that hurt you. Right. And that's realize that has to be put on a bottle or on a product or MSP because it has had so many issues and complaints. That means there are so many fucking dumb people yeah. out there someone, that they, it caused a warning. When you read a warning and you say, <gasps> Who was Who dumb the enough? Fuck? And, and it, it could be you. <laughs> but no, but you meet them. Yeah. And you go, oh. And you vote. Oh, no. Oh, Christ. <laughs> oh, God. You have a political opinion, too? You, you made children? Oh. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, no. So, switching to. Oh, you procreated? Switching gears real quick. Well, hold on. Somebody let them put their dick in you? Or vice versa. Or you let that, you know, you don't want to shame anybody. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody eventually fucks a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, not everybody can fuck the green-hearted liberals. I almost just laughed water all over your floor. You know, That's it's awesome. okay. I've cleaned this floor probably ten times in the last five days. That's anxiety for you, kids. Negative. So... That is anxiety. I, I, I actually wanted to switch yeah. a little bit to you and to okay, anxiety and traveling. Mm-hmm. What kind of flyer are you? <clears throat> are you a, when the when during takeoff and during landing? No, you, perfect. I'm a perfect flyer. I actually grab. The I arms. need nothing. I actually grab the arms and I say, if I'm not whether I'm with my my wife and kid or not, I, I, I mentally say I love you to them. Like I want that to be my last thought. If that if it because. Of oh course, man, I grew up with roller coasters. But the thing so is, I go up and I'm like, yeah, let's but go. The thing is, let's get there faster. <laughs> like it's yeah. a, it's I love the adrenaline rush. The thing I, is, I'm I not nervous. I'm so only much. nervous 
when things can really go wrong, which is on takeoff and landing. Because when, oh, no, when do most planes have a problem is on takeoff or landing. Either that or you they fly into a mountain or something. Yeah, have you never flown across country? The only times yes. I had the only times I had turbulent flights were flying from California to mm-hmm. Hold on. Let me get the years right. Yeah, California. California to Chicago. Direct flight. That's amazing. Yeah, it was a storm in Chicago. Each when isn't there? And and <laughs> and California to LAX to Laguardia, Laguardia, New York. Yeah, straight from LA to New York. One stop. No, no stops. No stops. LA. Yeah, yeah. LA to New York, and it's and the flight you, left at like eight p.m. You are the Brian Brushwood of the duo. Eight p.m. <laughs> It left so fucking late, and then we got there at fuck, almost sunrise. Like it was. Bad. I mean, I can handle shit. turbulence. Like I start breathing through my nose, maybe. But, but I'm, the I, plane shook, and we all kind of went. You ever had a plane just drop it for because of turbulence? And then every yeah, day, but I love rolling. And you hear everybody's butt pucker and just go. <laughs> everybody go. <laughs> I'm the one asshole that goes. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, but it's over before you even realize it happened, and you're just like. But when you go through, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of, just kind of pulls you out of your body. And just sorry, earphone listeners. I'm not. It's a very wet room. We can dial this down. We can cut down the highs and the. I do the, the editing, highs. asshole. I. You can <laughs> cut down the highs and the mid highs, and it just right. like literally take this end down, and then just leave the rest. Of the no, no, unfiltered, unedited. That's the tagline, buddy. Oh, okay. You don't want to edit any of this. Oh, gotcha. This, that was the you're point. Not, you're not putting in any effort for. The people. The people. The people. Oh, I put in effort. You got, uh, you're not fat enough. The people. The people. The people. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Rex. Oh. Sorry, not. Oh, shit. Can we insert an eagle noise right now? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that eagle needs to be put down. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll call it vet. Jesus. Or a hunter with a shotgun. A six cage. An overweight. Is there any better? <laughs> is there any better <laughs> analogy for America than an overweight? <laughs> but yeah, because because the eagle has to have arthritis and when it's the ground at thirty five and asthma <laughs> and tendonitis and carpal tunnel. Oh, but it only eats a vegan diet. <laughs> it only eats the it only except eats on the, Fridays and then it because fish. the early bird gets the worm. But that's, there's that's, the tagline. Worms aren't vegan. Oh. I mean, the worm might be vegan. But I don't know. Worms, there's the there's the big argument. Actually, worms, worms are vegan. All they eat is dirt. Wor- well, no, that's the thing. Are worms sentient? Mm-hmm. That is the argument. They are. If they're sentient, if they're a sentient creature with a mind and a mindset and a, and a drive and an intrinsic motivation, then taking their life without their consent is the antithesis of veganism. That's what's great about fishing. You get to kill a thing to kill a thing. But... So many people I, I, don't I'm remember. Kidding, kidding. So many people don't remember Young Frankenstein oh. when they're talking about That's Vermicelli. Nice you got there. When they're talking about <laughs> Vermicelli, and he says, "Do you mean the worm or the spaghetti?" Oh, there is a. And he goes, "Why the worm, sir?" Was there a Vermicelli? And he goes, man? "Yes." And he says, "Well, a worm, unlike a human, is a very different creature, or something." I don't this remember. is what Mel Brooks wrote, though. I know, I know, but Mel Brooks. I know. No, Brooks is so good. And if you're an anti-Semite, go fuck yourself. Like, you're you're just so wrong. You have no sense of humor. You know no sense of comedy. Oh, we're... Oh, so, shit. We're we have 20 minutes to go. We got 20 minutes to fill. Vamp, vamp. Fuck. It's okay. Oh, we're, I can talk about Mel Brooks? Oh, let's talk about Actually, Mel Brooks. Actually, I, I was going to ask you, oh. what's your worst... Uh, Penis cleaning moment? <laughs> airport story. Like, I, oh, know. I shit my pants in an airport. <coughs> oh, wow. D- DFW. Keep it on, on, keep it on theme yeah, for the DFW. episode. DFW. Uh, what is thank DFW? You, uh, Dallas Fort Worth. Oh, I thought that was an acronym for like an abbreviation for something. No, I shit my pants in Dallas Fort Worth. I was like, DFW, what is that? <laughs> I, I did. Defecate um, something, something? I went to, I think, an Applebee's one year where I was, well, was traveling across for a Gig or a clinic. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going to teach, and 
I had I had specifically taken a, a two night bag, so I had it with me. But I'm walking out of the restaurant. This is not 20 minutes after I'm done with the meal, and I go, "Oh no!" Girl. And it was it was no. There was pain. There was pain like in my chest under my sternum, so I knew it was fresh. There was something bad in what I ate. And, <laughs> it, and it, this it way as comes. soon as it hit, right about here, I went, this is going to take the wind out of me. I need to call and tell them I'm going to be late. <clears throat> oh, wow. And I did, and I called, and I you said, know what's hey, bad I'm going to gotta, I gotta move the clinic. I got to go. That's what it was. I got to move the clinic four hours down. I can't do it at, I can't do it at three. I got to do it at seven. I've got to get the next flight out. And then... Bad things. And, the, the, and so, then you got so more here's, aromatic. So here's the thing. <laughs> yeah. The restroom and my gate, because I had gotten off the first plane uh-huh. and just walked in like, I need, I need food. I didn't eat. I fucked up. I didn't eat before my flight. I fucking hate doing that. Yeah. Please eat something before your flight, but... Not something that's going to make you heavy, super gassy. Something that's going to plug you up. Mm-hmm. But something that's going to hold some weight and keep you keep you satiated for a couple hours. Pizza, carbs. Yeah, something something filling. Ah, lovely, lovely carbs. I did not do that, and I was eating mostly vegetable diet, and it didn't work out in my favor. <laughs> Things did, not and it go didn't as work out in anybody's favor. I have never. I've only ran faster once. Oh, well, but you, fortunately, you had other clothing to change into. I had my bag. You hadn't, like, checked no, it I all had, in. No, I had a two-night oh, bag. Could you imagine if I had a two-night bag that I was hauling ass with me. <laughs> Literally. Wow. Fucker. I mean, yes. I thought mine was bad. Uh, I'm, s- I'm swinging the bag, like, trying not to hit people, but I'm going to get the fuck out of the way I got to go. And I'm running because if I run, yeah. this is my this is my thought. I'm running. I keep clenched, and I keep tight. Yep. Oh, I've, and if I've I had that moment, and I'm just booking it, going, I need to make it. I need to make it. And and I got to you turning should. around to close the stall door. Oh no, that close! And it started. Shoved everything down. Finished. And then you just look at the de- the detritus. <laughs> and I had to throw everything that I had on away. Well, yeah. What are you going to do? Put and it in a bag? I, and then I changed out into my only change of clothes that I had. And I wore the same thing for two days after that. Oh, like, it was okay, but it was weird play. I don't like... I don't like... You know this. Yeah. When I load in gear, I like to wear something different than when I perform. I like to change out. Sure. You want to feel fresh anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get that at the clinic. And oh. I felt so fucking gross the entire time I'm talking to this room full of people. You can't even explain why. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. What are and you going to say? And the other thing I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to go buy, buy a, sh- a change of clothes. I'm just not. I mean, maybe if there was like a thrift store or something. Not when I, the only thing I have left to do after that is to get on the plane and go home. Yeah. Like it's a, it's a turn and burn. You must, when you got home, you must have been like, well, wow. God, I can't, I'm so I glad to be home. I took a shower. I was gonna say you must the take a shower. First thing I did. First thing I did. I facing it, backwards. <laughs> just, just <laughs> under hot water, really hot water to scrub off all the germs. Yeesh. So, I thought mine was that. That's bad. Mine was. So yeah, mine yeah. Was, I've we, had a, we, I've we, had a bad, a bad, a couple bad incidents at airports, so, but that's one of them. Mine was. We were coming back from Maui. So, you know, you've, you've had a good time, but you're tired. You want to get home. Jet lag. We're flying on Spirit. Ah, uh, fuck. We're in St. No, I'm sorry. Not Maui. What am I saying? We were in St. Louis. <laughs> That's where I'm flying out to Kansas City. We were flying back. Yeah. From, yeah. So we, we, we. I know, I know this flight. I've done this flight. And we were there for eight hours in the airport because Spirit had, didn't have their crap together. Fortunately, there was a bar with a restaurant. So... Ari was, my daughter was five, maybe? She was old enough to go in and eat with us in the bar, but then she went and hung with mommy while father-in-law and I sat there and just drank for a while and just for like 
This is ridiculous. He kept looking at the clock like, really? Really? You and... It was all five of us. I mean, you and... Um, what? Not... Not... My wife, my kid, my in-laws. Yeah. Yeah. Father-in-law. Yeah. Yeah. David, yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying. I'm trying not to say names. I'm just trying to like the, the this one. They, it's fine. They don't know his last name. His last name is. They don't know his last name is uh, Dominguez Jorge Jones Guadalupe the third. Anyway, that was incredibly racist of you. Not at all. So I, but I was Scale like, of one to ten, it's like a seven. I thought being stuck for eight hours. In an airport, it was bad, but that's you. You win. You you win, buddy. I've done. I've done seven hours in an airport. I've done. I've done. Uh, fi- fuck. I've done fifty. But like, did you know that was happening, or was it? A, no, it was. It was because if you don't. Oh, well, I've got no, a I was there on layover. time. I was there on time, and the flight oh, missed the connecting flight. Yeah, that's the other thing is if if they said, "Hey, it's going to be eight hours," and it was in Vegas, we'd be like, "All right, well, we'll go home for a bit." Or we'll go to some place we know and eat there where it's cheaper. But no, this was in St. Louis. We're well, they're not going to tell you because the airport wants to make money. Well, yeah, but man, there is nothing more uncomfortable than an, a seat in an airport lounge after five hours. You're just like, I, I don't want to walk because I'm tired, but I don't want to sit because it, I'm tired and it hurts. I don't want to sit. I don't want to sit because it hurts. I don't want to stand because I don't have the energy. And if I go to the place with the food and the alcohol, it's wooden seats, <laughs> which hurt. <laughs> Why is it always wooden benches? Because they don't want you to stay longer. I hate them. You know, that's why McDonald's, their paint scheme for a while was red and orange. Because those colors make you want to leave. Sensory overload. Yeah. Yeah. I did know that. Uh, and yellow, of course. Because yeah, I mean, gold marches, but... Oh my gosh. So, uh, by the way, we really do appreciate it. If you're listening to this, thank you so much for supporting. And thank you for listening, giving us a reason to yell into the void. But but if you have any questions... I'm sorry if I yell too loud. It's okay, buddy. Just, it's okay. Just throwing it out there for everybody. Right. I, don't want, I don't want anybody to feel like I'm attacking them. I never want to come across like I'm attacking anybody. It's okay, buddy. Except the people that I punched in the fucking throat. Right. Anyway, uh, but no, if you have any questions you want us to, to tackle and do our best with, um, email two brains one bottle at gmail.com. Email address is in the show notes along with other things. Go ahead, sit down. Not making any noise. You're be- that was beautifully done. I know. Well done, sir. I know. Those ass cheeks were quiet. <laughs> They're very tight. <laughs> no, unlike that day at the airport. <laughs> I'm like, which day? I don't remember all of them. Have you crapped your pants in more than one airport? He, he's thinking about it. No. Mm. I think just CFW. Noise. But stick However, with- I... Ooh, never mind. That is another tale for okay. another episode. Stick I with- will keep you all listening in. Sticking with the theme, though. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, without getting too much into your personal history or anything, you lived in St. Louis, or sorry, Kansas City for a while. Yeah. And you hated it. You weren't mm, fond. Not a fair statement, as I've recently come to terms with. Oh, okay. He's grown, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes, in several inches. <laughs> no, no. A late, you, a late, a late bloomer, you've as lo- they say. No, you've lost weight, buddy. Thank you. Oh, you weren't talking about your belly. No, no. I was talking about the gains in my... Uh, gains, bro! Nether regions. No, I Anyway. That's actually a, a, a wonderful side benefit to losing weight in your tummy. Is Your dick really does look bigger when you lose pubic mound flesh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that might be one of the grossest <laughs> things I've ever said. Three words. Perfectly pubic mound in- flesh. Three words, two of which at least were perfectly innocent, nice words, and you just... <laughs> I'm a horror fan. Oh. Flash is in my vernacular very strongly. That reminded me so much of Pat Oswald saying the words, Swab <laughs> my folds. <laughs> Swab my folds. Three perfectly nice words. <laughs> Oh, Thank pubic, you. I love Patton Oswalt. I think he's mouth great. Flesh. Yeah, oh, pubic mouth flesh. Oh, we could do a whole other podcast just about Patton Oswalt. 
Oh man, we his... can do a whole other podcast about our appreciation for stand-up comedy, and then I can well, really, ooh, oh, that would be what we charge well, premium for because I actually did my high school research paper on stand-up comedy and the way it affects our minds. Really, and the way laughing affects our minds. If you want to tune into that, that you will pay extra for because I did a shitload of work on that, and I have so many fucking books that I have read through. I know what I'm talking about. If that sounds interesting, let us know in the comments. Oh, I would love to talk stand-up comedy, please. Oh, please give me the lane to talk about see, Carlin and Kinnison and oh, everybody. See. In between, and Robin Williams, and Richard Pryor, and Bernie Mac, and D.L. Hughley. Oh, Here's give my... me the opportunity! Here's my question. Let's go. I know I threw in a lot of weird... When... <laughs> oh, I, knew, I recognized all those yeah, names. Yeah. But when when will the time... The, when do you think stand-up comedians are going to eventually stop making fun of Donald Trump? I mean, here's the thing. After mm-hmm. after anyone dies... I mean, they, they do it every president. Of after course. anyone dies. Yeah. Like, who's making Reagan jokes right now? Who's making Bush Sr. jokes? Who's making Bush Jr. jokes right now? Bush Jr. died? I'm saying... Oh, okay. Like, we're going into past presidents now, but I'm mm-hmm. going, like... Less to most, right? Like Bill Clinton, I think who's, who's still making Bill. Like it's relevant. But you, ha- you do have stand to up, admit, stand up always has to be on the cusp of cutting edge, or it will fucking die. I, if it's not edgy, if it doesn't push the boundaries, it is stale. It is old. It is tired, and it will not thrive. I agree, but there is an inordinate amount of material from the last four years, as compared to the last. Three, four presidents combined? The the one I'm most interested to hear the take on Trump mm-hmm. is Louis C.K. He's got a new Oh, I thought you were going to say Louis Black. Cause, I know, love Louis his, Black. His opinions are pretty, you know, I love obvious. Louis Black. I, yes. think, I think if you're not listening to Rantcast, you're missing out on some... Is that his podcast? Yeah. Rantcast of perfect. Rant, Rantcast perfect. With, perfect. Uh, with Louis Black. L-E-W-I-S-B-L-A-C-K. R-A-N-T. C A S T, P D Q. You went to R A N T, and I was like, "That's." That, I, I said R A N T, but okay. Oh, oh, R A N T. Yeah, rant cast. Yeah. No, uh, no, no. With Lewis Black. But yeah, I think I, I think if you're not listening to the the modern stuff, if you're not keyed into where the sense of creativity is going, mm-hmm. you're going to be behind the times and, and there's a there's an internal motivator there to be ahead of the time. And when you feel behind, it, it feels like you're catching up and that's never a good place to feel like you're coming from. So what I recommend to remedy that mm-hmm. is is look more towards the younger generations look more more towards the progressive voices the the what would be our modern day carlins or what would be our modern day priors like you got anthony jesselnick making some of the worst and more most horrific jokes i've oh, heard yeah. in in and yet at the same time it's the delivery is so Classic. Because it's so deadpan, it's so it's so it, yeah, club. There's it's that moment so you're just like tie. There's that moment of just like it processes, and then you're like, it's like it's like a John Mulaney. If John Mulaney was good, <gasps> I don't like him. Really? Yeah, I'm not a fan. Sorry. I think it, I like him. It, it, there are times where I'm in the mood for a John Mulaney. You know when there I like John Mulaney? For Anthony big Justin. mouth. I think he's great in that. Okay. I don't. I don't like his stand up though. And see, there are, well, if I'm going to take somebody in a suit and tie like that, yeah. I won't take John Mulaney. I'll take, uh, who's, who's, uh, the, the John Mulaney I like is when the, he, he tells the like the drawn guy? out stories of uh, uh, Jimmy Carr, Jimmy Carr. Yes. I'll take Jimmy Carr oh, over. Have you heard Jimmy Carr laugh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like, can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're like, that's gotta I can, be, I can do it with an exit. You're can't like, do that's it gotta be hand. affected. It's got to be affected, but no. Uh, the big fat game show he he used to host, or he's so good on that. But 
Every time he laughed, he did it. And I'm like, that can't, that can't be a bit. That can't be a bit. That's just how he laughs. I'm like, how did that become a thing? How do you? How does that become your laugh? So when did you hear that he laughed on an inhale instead of an exhale? Because I, I that was I, I didn't I think really think was, about it, but now that you mention it, yeah, it was the first. Th- it was the first special I saw him doing. He was like, a lot of people make fun of me because of the way I laugh, but I laugh because I laugh on an inhale. <laughs> and I went, oh, that that hits my ear differently. And he right. did it now. And <laughs> here's a trick: Have you ever tried speaking while inhaling? Yeah, there was Hello. a whole... There Hello. Was a whole How are you doing? I, I know this is a little uh, after your time, but there was a whole Tenacious D. I'm sorry, after my time? Tenacious D. Yeah, I know Tenacious D. Skit called I'm, Inward Singing. And now I'm a good singer. And I'm a good singer. Like, I forgot yeah, about that. Yeah, 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 Inward Singing was a whole fucking thing Tenacious D did. For I want to give all the credit to Jack Black and Kyle Gass. I always feel like Jack Black... He is underrated. He was in the jackal with Bruce Willis. He was. And he got shot to <laughs> shit. He was, he was in King Kong. Well, yeah, but he had like his arm fucking blown off in the jackal. Yeah. No, like he's like, it was, and he sold he's it. He's underrated as an actor, yes. but he's I think sometimes he He can't be taken seriously because of Like he rides around on a, he rides around on a motorcycle with Mjolnir, you know, the, the Thor's Mjolnir. hammer and, and a cape and, and there's like and his belly, he's just like But he's, he's which is it? What do you want? And, and I think he's trying to straddle the line between goofball can you and not, serious actor. Can you not be the lovable fat guy and also someone who's taken seriously for their dramatic ability? I think he's trying to but every time I see him do the goofball I'm like, um now that's all I can think about. Just like when I hear Tenacious D, all I think about is Dave Grohl is the devil. Right, but then <laughs> but then I go back to like high fidelity. Yes! And, and that the moment the moment where he starts singing and you're just like and everybody's just like There's captivation. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But that I, that is like there's that, and then there's the jackal for me because he's solid in that. And then, if you will remember, Cable Guy with Matthew Broderick and Jim Carrey. I never actually saw it because it, it is so good. Because we the need commercials to do, we need to do a watch it. along with Cable Guy. It was like from ninety four, ninety six, or some shit. You know what would be interesting? Oh my oh, god, yeah. it's we, good. We need, we need to, I love we need, that movie. We need to wrap up. We're almost out of time. But what would be interesting is oh no, we each take turns saying, "I got a movie you need to watch," and then we sit down and, and, and we, then an you make the other person watch to. that person watch it, and we we do that. That's an idea. And if you got any movie suggestions, please let us know in the comments. In the meantime, by the way, what? Oh, what? Personally, I am a horror fan, and I've been a horror fan but since the horror since as the, in to scary or horror as in so cheesy it's good. Yeah. Okay. I like stuff that terrifies me, mm. and I like stuff that terrifies me because if you're not scared, if you're not viscerally motivated by something, why are you here? I don't know why, but maybe having a kid changed me, but suddenly certain types of horror movies, I'm like, no. Like what? I spit on your grave. Oh, yeah. Like sexual horror. Yeah. Sexual, yeah. For, the, for, for those the, of the uninitiated, I spit on your grave is a, a lot of rape. Uh, a lot of rape. 70s or 80s, originally, uh, movie that got redone in the 2000s or 2010s. Yeah, yeah. And it's always around the 20 year mark, 30 year mark that they get redone. That one, The Hills Have Eyes, same yeah. kind of thing. But it's rape revenge horror, and yeah. it's it is not a lane for everybody. And for some reason, I was at well, let's just say I get a little bit of catharsis from the final girl stabbing the shit the, out of the perpetrator. The shotgun, like, for me, the shotgun up the ass. That, that, that there you go. Yeah. That See, there's a there's a catharsis. The is, there's every a, there's now a and then. When my uh, brain no, starts, no pun intended, release. Yes, when my brain starts <laughs> to remember it, I immediately have to say, "Nope, I'm done." And with that, I'm going to say we're done with this episode. Keep going, you think? Yeah, you're going to have to. That's true. That was, yeah. A, yeah, okay, yeah. Fine. I know. But yes, I I have to shut my brain off about it and be like, "No, right," because it puts me in a dark place. And that's and that's the thing. When I sit down and watch a horror movie, mm-hmm. I have to one. I have to. Are you okay? Yeah. I thought you knocked that against your tooth. No, I didn't. Okay. I just almost knocked it. Uh, when I sit down and watch a horror movie, I want to sit down in the dark 
with a bowl of popcorn. All right. Okay. Okay. Bowl of popcorn in the dark by myself. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody interrupting. And if the movie is genuinely shit (laughs) after the first 20, 25 to 70 minutes, look, you gotta, (laughs) you gotta buy me in. If you don't, if you don't captivate my attention, I'm not gonna be devoted to the idea of your movie. Right. So 25 to an hour and a half. Like, if the movie's any longer than that, I'm still trying to get invested. It better be so fucking good at the end that I lose my shit. And you want that denouement. You want that moment of just I want that out of left field. I, I want that, I I want that denouement it. in the last. You want the icy dead people. Ninety right? seconds of the movie to the credits. Oh, I want it so. I want it written so slow burner. But at that the same you time, you get to hear and it goes. Boom! And then sequel. You oh, so got me! You got me! As soon so as you, as soon as you do that, the hand flip comes out, the of the, out of the grave of the. Oh no! Just no! 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 Not even the hand come out of the grave. All right, you do you do the burial of the body, right? You do the r- ritual of the spell. You do all the thing with the dagger and all the stuff. I'm borrowing a little bit loosely from Evil Dead, but you get to the last ten seconds. And there's a camera shake. I mean, something so fucking small that just like a like a solid Jurassic Park glass of water. So you like? Oh, I want I want that at the but, but, end but, but of but a horror. But they don't say to be continued. No, yeah. no, no, no. I want that at the end of a horror movie because then I can go. Here's how I write the sequel. It leaves such a big fucking lane open of interpretation mm-hmm. that it is just who you guys go. Okay. Right? Oh wow, okay. Yeah. I love I love horror movies. See, I go, used to be like you. Oh, man. I used to be like you, full of hope and no, I used to be that way with movies. <laughs> just going with you. I was like, used to be full of hope. But and, and then I, I just got tired and I was like, I don't I don't I got tired! I it's tired! It is tired. It's called having a family and a, and a full-time job. What you're telling and, me is I'm fucked. No, what I'm telling you is hold lose, on to that. Lose the sense of life. I'm saying hold on to that. Give up while you're young. Hold on to that spark, young grasshopper. But no, it's... it's I sometimes want... I don't want predictable. Like, I love a movie where the opening... Just the opening alone, you're like... Um, Casino Royale with James Bond. The whole... Jump, the whole free running chase scene thing. I love that because I was like, this is unlike any James Bond movie you've ever seen Cold already. Open. Cold, Cold open. open, but also the fucker busts through the wall. Well, yeah. <laughs> and and he's also doing Also that. But you can see like, oh, he's like, this is gonna hurt, but I gotta do it. And he goes and does it. Um, I think personally, there's a whole- I saw, I saw the same thing in, in Sherlock uh, with Watson, with uh, Robert Downey Jr. and, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jude Law. Jude Law was one of the best Dr. Watsons. I think his Dr. Watson is yeah. better than like, Robert Downey Jr. He Jr's. does not give a fuck about Sherlock Holmes' brilliance. <laughs> he's like, he knows, I'm so he knows over where the, He knows where the fallacies lie. Yeah, but also he's like, can we get to the part where you're brilliant already and stop with the part where you shoot at me? Or you 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 cause me to be shot at, or you put me in a parachute, or you I can try to be ruin my locked onto a minefield. You try to break up my engagement because of your stupidity. Yeah, um, right. But even in the even in the books, like yeah, Doctor Watson has always been just like it's such a good character. I agree. But Jude Law's execution of it, I really appreciate it. And Robert Downey Jr. is like he was born to be Iron Man. There's just. Yes. When well, or typecast. The second I saw him as um, Tony Stark, I was just like, yes, now let's see how he does his Iron Man. <gasps> hey, you know, <laughs> it's not bad. What I, what I loved was the interpretation of Tony Stark turning, not not turning into Iron Man, but it is a... Well, almost a realization by him, like, oh, I'm... I'm a, uh, a duality. A balance. Let's be let's be honest. This is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. <laughs> well, like Tony Stark is a uh, is an eccentric billionaire, yeah. billionaire yeah. playboy philanthropist, well, and, and Iron Man is selfless, 
a hero worshipped by many uh, and fills in all of the War. <laughs> fills in the humanity gaps to Iron Man. No, no, no. I'm talking about going up to Yeah, I get it, I get it. Going um, up to Endgame. I think like that's at the core of his human. Yeah. That's what Tony Stark is. The first couple of uh, Iron Man movies, I feel were classic old school Iron Man comics where he's living in the bottle and losing everything and dealing with all that crap. Right. And then up to Avengers and Endgame, it's like all of a sudden he's the Iron Man who bangs alien women and does all this other stuff. We can tell comics. I was. I've got. I've got some comics. For now me. my comics knowledge is not probably I've, as I've, extensive as yours, but I'm getting there. I'm no, getting. I've just. I've got. I've got. I've got like Batman versus Predator. Like I remember that. I love. I, remember I, love, that one. I love crossover comics. Those are. Oh my god. Okay. This is why I love fantasy booking. Can we do a whole thing on? Crossover comics because it's so our many podcast, people, buddy, we can do whatever so we many want. people isolate crossover comics from being like, oh, this isn't continuity. This doesn't matter. Is it canon? Blah blah blah. Is it canon? You're yeah. like, let's treat all the crossover comics I as hate, their own universe. I hate the word canon, but but we need we need to finish this one off. I'm saying this is a good idea. I'm saying I if agree. you if you would like to hear us talk through or voice mm -hmm. possibly with animation stuff. Do comic readings, that would be great. Uh, crossover comics you would recommend. I'm a big fan of Alien, Predator, Batman, Deadpool, anybody that breaks the fourth wall from there. Yeah, I always enjoy Marvel and DC crossover as well. But also, I like uh, Dark Horse comics <clears throat> too. Uh, Spawn's a big one for me. I, I grew up with the, uh, the Spawn, the uh, Michael J. White movie. Okay, yeah. I keep forgetting that was him. Yeah, and it was. Entertaining. Yeah, John I mean, he, he didn't get to do any of fucking martial weird, arts but John, John Leguizamo was like supposed to be fucking weird yeah. in that role. Plus, you had uh, was Dan, yeah, Danny DeVito was in that one, right? As uh, the clown. Yeah. No, that was John Leguizamo. That's what I just said. Oh, I'm sorry. Who did? Who was the first? Spawn You're thinking movie? of where Danny DeVito was? Wasn't Danny DeVito? No. Am I crazy? Probably. Danny crazy. DeVito was Mini Me in Austin Powers Three. No, 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 it was not. Yes, he was. Yes, he was when Tom Cruise was, uh, or two maybe, but Austin Powers was played by Tom Cruise in an intro for episode two or episode three of the movies, and then Danny DeVito was mini me and was like, "Hey, assholes!" He's got the fucking cigar in his mouth. I'm mini me. Okay, Come I, and get me. I haven't seen this at all. I need. I need to look on the internet for this. This oh. sounds amazing. Oh, but wow. In the meantime, I, uh, thank the, you for listening. The movies, the movies are all on uh, um, Am Amazon Prime. Of course they are. Amazon Prime. Right on. Well, in the meantime, thank you for listening. We're going to sit here and probably uh, drink some more of this amazing whiskey oh and, and ruin his flight tomorrow. <laughs> but if you know someone that you think might be interested in this podcast, please share the love. Let them know. And uh, for as little as a dollar a month, they can definitely hear this every month. Uh, I'm thinking the monthly podcast is what we're aiming for here. If you would like to be a guest, uh, we oh, can yeah. work out we can work out a a Skype or Zoom thing with you. But mm -hmm. you know, uh, we we don't know that unless you message. Exactly. So create the conversation. Yep. Uh, in the meantime, remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time. Two brains, one bottles, and hopefully over on room six. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.